So I'm somewhat new to the world ecology field, so the aim of this work is to position my broader research on tipping into the framework of world ecology. So my work up until this point has focused mainly on the restaurant industry within the United States, so my gener any generalities that I discuss about tipping will probably be in reference to that particularity. So since the late 1970s, there has been a shift from industrial production in the core states to this increasing emergence of service sector employment. Given the increasing contradictions and crisis in the expansion of the capitalist world system and a possible strategic inversion of the frontier of capitalization in that system, new practices and techniques of appropriation are spreading and deepening in the capitalist core where once there was exploitation from expanding rounds of production. At the same time, a new era of neoliberal utopianism professes the emancipatory potential in the informalization of labor through uberization, the spread of the gig economy, as well as other forms of post fortis organization of production, distribution, and exchange. In this context, the emergence of what in capitalism, socialism, and ecology Andre Gertz alluded to as the new servants in the core states becomes particularly significant and how the neoliberal regime produces subordinated subjectivities that are condu uh, conducive to strategies of appropriation uh, becomes something in need of critical analysis. It is into the capitalist dystopia experienced by many in this subjectivity formation that our critical analysis must delve if we are to understand how crises in world ecology translate through into the production of social natures for the adapting needs of post-industrial capital in the core states of the world system. We can kickstart this critical agenda with an illustrative look at the increasing prevalent technique of tipping and its importance on subjectivity formation for neoliberal capitalism. A decrease in skilled industrial jobs has been met with an increase in low-skilled, low-pay, and often precarious service work. This work is often female-dominated and maintains a trend in service work generally, which Johanna Oxala refers to as a feminization of labor and which Silvia Federici and Maria Mies identified in the reproductive labor of women and colonized populations since the long 16th century. It is in this feminization of labor where I situate my analysis specifically of tipped work. I contend that services, and particularly those services which are tipped, have a direct relationship to the domestic fear, sphere, sorry, reproductive labor, and strategies of appropriation. So just to be clear for those of you who might not know what tipping is, tipping is a form of labor remuneration um, that frees employers from having to pay full, full wages to their employees. So to start, I will quickly situate tipping in a very short history, because to understand the history of tipping is to understand its recurrent social and political function. Tipping was practiced in, Tudor, in the Tudor period in England, when in private homes, visitors were expected to give veils or tips to the host's servants at the end of a visit for the services that they provided. It was from these veils that tipping spread to restaurants and hotels in Europe as a public a hospitality sector grew in the modern era. Serving grew out of domestic service into a distinct occupation of its own, with tipping as its main form of remuneration. In the 19th century Europe, an overcrowding of the labor market allowed employers to take advantage of the use of tips in a cost-free form of labor within the hospitality sector. Some workers even paid to work in the restaurants. This tipping tradition transferred across the Atlantic to the US and was first met with disapproval as it was considered undemocratic and un-American. This view was soon changed after private interests from the railroad and hospitality sectors fought to keep tipping through the 19th century. They argued that they should not have to pay their employees, many of whom were former slaves, wages because they received tips. This continued the economic subjugation of African Americans, and it is a contemporary custom based in hangovers of slavery, racism, exploitation, and a society predicated upon a political economy of servitude and subordination. Now to contemporary tipping. It is no coincidence that the majority of tipped workers are those who clean, cook, drive, deliver, and serve. It is those who have a connection to our everyday reproduction, the waitress, the Uber driver, the delivery worker, the barista, etc., whom are subject to the logic of tipping. Tipping is a controversial kind of exchange. In varying cultures, tips can symbolize a gift, an insult, and in the case of the United States, a legally recognized form of labor remuneration. In this latter example, there is 
uh, no formal or legal structure by which the amount of a tip is decided. It is not even mandatory. It is instead a cultural custom which is relied upon as the main source of income for millions of workers. These workers are disproportionately women, many of whom are at or below the poverty line. What tipping does is creates a system of distorted incentives in which workers have little to no recourse. It blurs the line between employer and customer, between wage and gift, and leaves vulnerable a workforce which is subject to the arbitrary proclivities of every individual customer. This creates a system which, one, subjects those close to the arena of reproductive work to some of the highest incidents of sexual harassment out of any industry. This is the restaurant industry in particular. Two, it utilizes a combination of exploitative and appropriative work practices by employers. And third, it leaves earnings to the sympathies of co consumers based on the subordination of workers. If our understanding of humanity and nature requires that we identify how social natures are produced in the oikios, then the, technique that uh, the techniques that transform subjectivities in reproductive labor according to new imperatives of capital accumulation need to be studied. Tipping represents one of these techniques. When working for tips, performance is crucial. You must humble yourself to the individual proclivities of the consumer. Smile, laugh, reveal about yourself whatever they may ask of you. If not, there is the potential for economic retaliation. For many outside of the United States, a discussion about tipping might seem inapplicable in other poor states of the world system. However, I contend that techniques such as tipping are spreading in parallel with the increased informalization of labor in what might be called the uberization or the spread of the gig economy. I would quickly like to give a few examples of this spread, first in the United States, second in the UK, and third in Australia. So, a recent video put out by the platform Divided States of Women begins with a prompt, next time you get in an Uber, you might want to consider tipping your Uber driver a little more. The premise of the entire video is to lay out how the Uber business operates, operation functions, and what portion of the fares go to the drivers themselves versus the fees taken by Uber. It goes on to explain that if Uber were an employer rather than a firm which hired independent contractors, it would be the largest for-profit uh, employer in all of New York City. Rather than a call to the public to demand the increased profit share for drivers or the recognition of drivers as workers, the video emphasized the need for the public individuals to tip a little bit more. Second, conversations about tipping in the UK where I'm in the middle of doing my PhD are usually met by dismissal, but within about 60 seconds it comes to light how relevant tipping is. Uh, at a recent conference I spoke to someone who talked about their reliance on Deliveroo. I just work so much, was her explanation. And when I get home, I don't have any groceries or time to cook. She continues, I feel really bad about it, and I tip them because I know they don't make that much, and I feel guilty. Third, a recent conversation with a friend in Australia was met by a very firm view on tipping. In Australia, we don't tip. It is looked down upon. Within 24 hours, I received an email from him directing me to a website for an alcohol delivery service. Yes, there are alcohol delivery services. I didn't know. It prompts customers at checkout with an automated uh, potential tip, stating, we have suggested a $2 tip on your order. You can increase it, decrease it, or ignore it altogether. All tips go to our amazing team of drivers who work tirelessly to get your order to you fast. In this case, drivers receive a qualification of being amazing and endearment to connect with the emotion of the customer. However, if the drivers are working tirelessly, surely they should be compensated by the company for whom they are working. Instead, a relational emphasis is placed on the consumer to subsidize the wages of the company's employees. These emerging relations of tipping are environment making. This is a way in which, to quote Jason Moore, capitalist civilization has enmeshed individual life activity into a web of life whose interconnections are much denser, more geographically expansive, and more intimate than ever before. It is not just our breakfast, which is a world historic activity, but our lunch, our dinner, and our car rides. These activities are generative of social relations of power and economic command in which it is not just the power to buy products anymore, but the power to buy service. This relation and this space produces some activities of command and of servility and subordination in a way that it um, is helpful for appropriative tactics. So how is appropriation of surplus realized by the technique of tipping? 
Tipping most often occurs in the spaces of reproduction of, reproduction of beans. Our meals, our beverages, etc., are increasingly being made by, served by, cleaned up by someone else. It is in this satisfaction of basic corporeal needs which creates a class similar to what Andre Grotz calls the new servants. These new servants provide services in the form of a satisfaction of needs, which are a form of what he calls equivalent substitution, and can often allow for the creation of free time for those willing and able to pay another individual to perform activities that they are nevertheless able to perform themselves. This freeing up of time is merely a paying of someone else as a substitute for work that one could perform for oneself. This latter work has been um, categorized as unproductive, and to quote Gortz again, to buy someone else's time to increase your own leisure or comfort is merely to purchase the work of a servant as an equivalent substitute. In this way, surplus labor can be transferred in a zero-sum political economy, in freeing up this time, a service society or an ecological space relations is created, and freed time is created by those who serve to the benefit of those who command monetary, monetary power. This equivalent substitution, which is bound into the service economy, produces relations and an ecological space which subordinates laborers in a juxtaposition somewhere between wage work and reproductive appropriation. The results of this increasing reliance and growth on service industries generally will be, a recon, uh, will be a reconceptualization of relations of employment and forms of payment. The predominance of wage exploitation of productive industry meets contradiction in the service industry. Wealth extraction from the production of service becomes the new task of capitalism. What is then necessary is a shift to an appropriative emphasis in pursuit of a maximization of work and the reduction of cost. This is precisely what the technology of tipping does. It is an energizing force which parallels the carrot and the stick, the limitless postponement of potential earnings, of being your own boss, of being an entrepreneur of the self, of a capitalist utopia. This limitless, this limitless postponement, or the endless potential to earn, highlights the contradiction emergent in the contemporary stage of neoliberal capital. In order to provide an expanding, cheap service economy, wages are reduced and kept at a minimum and are subsidized by tips from consumers. The technique of tipping creates a set of relations, a bundled oikios, which has a generative power in the way we live our lives. It creates an ecological space in which we get our food and drink, get to and fro, and even receive affection. In conclusion, uh, to Jason Moore in Capitalism and the Web of Life, I think Coily asks us to try drawing a line around the social and the natural in the cultivation and the consumption of food. I have tried my best to do the opposite. Instead, this research aims to understand how a specific instance of consumption fits into the web of life using the framework of world ecology. I'm not suggesting we stop tipping necessarily, but instead to think of the ways in which we live as relational, as both constituted and constituting, to look at the things we do in our lives which we take for granted, and to see in them the productive and generative power they have in making of the web of life. <laughs>